Six fantastic games in the NBA tonight? Well, five. The Rockets are involved. Five fantastic games, but if you can correctly predict all six, you can take home $25,000. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Jason Mattis with Winning Bets. Thanks for hanging out with me on this episode. It's our weekly NBA show that we do here. Because it's over on the Fox Bet Super 6 app, we can win $25,000. They give us six NBA games. All we have to do is correctly predict six winners and give them the right win margins for each game. And we can take home that $25,000 prize. If nobody can do it, they'll give away a guaranteed $1,000 prize to the group of people that can get the most points. You get three points right if you, or you get three points if you can get the winner right, and an additional two points if you get the win margin right. Last week there were no jackpot winners, and as and as far as ourselves, we got 15 points because we got five of the six winners right. And obviously, you know, three points for each one gets us a 15. I only gave out four here on the show, but I sent out a tweet later on in the afternoon before, you know, the game started because Luka Donich was ruled out. So we made a change from going off of the Mavs and off of the Thunder. So we did end up getting that pick right. So that's how we got five of the six winners right. So you just want to make sure you're following me on Twitter because as, you know, injury news comes out throughout the day, we may always modify these picks. So, yeah, just make sure you're following me on Twitter there so you can get the right winning picks. So, and don't forget, my stats always involve the last 10 games. So any information I give you, it's relevant to the last 10 games of the NBA season. With that being said, let's jump on into it and break down these games. All right, the first matchup here is the Raptors and the Pistons. Offensively speaking, it's it's pretty even. The only thing the Raptors do better is shoot the three ball, and they'll shoot it about three percentage points better, which means they'll get more points per game. They're getting about three more points per game. So even though they shoot the three better, it's not translate translating into a whole lot of more points over than what the Pistons are getting. I mean, you're talking three points, so you're really talking one bucket. So not a huge advantage, but they do shoot the three better. The defensively, though, this is where the Pistons have the edge because they're holding their opponents to a better three-point shooting uh, allowed. So they may be able to neutralize you know, what the Raptors do really good, which is shoot the three better. And then the Pistons, they're holding their opponents about six less points per game. So the edge will definitely go here to the Pistons on the defensive side. The net ratings, it actually favors the Pistons right now. I mean... Uh, it's at minus negative 3.3 and negative 5.4. And what we mean by net rating is you take your offensive rating and your defensive rating and you get the average. You want to be in the positive. You certainly don't want to be in the negative, but both of these teams are in the negative. But the Pistons are less in the negative, so that's why there is better. And then the rebounding rate, it's about even. There's only one percentage point difference, so there will be no big advantage there on the rebounding side. For this one there, and when I mentioned about maybe following me on Twitter because we may change the pick, right now I'm locked in on the Pistons to win the game by 3-4. to four. I do think offensively they're relatively even, and then defensively, like I said, the edge goes to the Pistons. But the Raptors, they've had COVID issues, right? They've had guys miss the miss about the, about the last week to 10 days worth of games. And, and primarily, if we look at who we're talking about here, we're talking about Van Vliet and we're talking about Siakam. Those two guys are now starting to work their way back into practice. One of them's doubtful and one of them's questionable tonight. If one of those plays, you know, that could tip the hand back into the Raptors because they've been struggling, you know, without their playmakers on the court, as most teams would. But if these guys play, then you could maybe see the Raptors winning this game. We won't know until a little bit later on this afternoon and maybe early part of the evening if these guys will play. So, again, make sure you follow me on Twitter because we may make a change to this one. But right now, we'll be on Pistons to win the game by 3-4. to four. Next matchup here is the Nets and the Pacers. My, the Nets are a really good team. I, they're gonna, I think they're going to be favored, obviously, to win the Eastern Conference. They're just really good. Offensively, they're better. They shoot the ball. Effective field goal percentage is about five percentage points better. From the three, it's the same. It's five percentage points better. They're getting five more points per game. So the edge offensively goes to the Nets. And when you look at defensively, the edge also goes to the Nets. Effective field goal percentage allowed is three percentage points less for the Nets. And then the three-point field goal percentage is also three percentage points less. So subsequently, they're they're holding their opponents to less points per game, and it's about eight less points per game. So, yeah, the offensive edge, defensive edge, both goes in favor of the Nets here. Net rating, big advantage here for the Nets. They're at positive 9.3, and the Pacers are at negative 3.6. Rebounding rate is also goes to the Nets, which is a little bit remarkable. I guess it's all because of DeAndre Jordan there, but I wouldn't expect them to be a great rebounding team, but they definitely have an edge over the Pacers. They're going to get about... 
I'd say about four to maybe six rebounds more per game over you know over the course of this game. So this one's a no-brainer. Uh, offensive advantage, defensive advantage, net rating, everything favors you know rebound. Everything favors the Nets. It's just a matter of what you want the win percentage to be. They are a road team tonight. The Nets are going to be. So I'll say the Nets win the game, but it'll be by five to six points. The next one we got here is the Bucks and the 76ers. The 76ers are on the back end of a back-to-back. I went ahead and looked up their schedule. So far this season, they're 1-2 and two on the back end of a back-to-back, and their only win came against the Pistons team. So that doesn't bode well for them going into this matchup tonight. We obviously know Joel Embiid will also still be out due to that knee injury. But if we look at these teams offensively, even. Field goal percentage is 55.8 versus 55.5. You know, points in the paint are 52 versus 52.8. They're one team scoring 120 points. The other team scoring 119.3. From the three, eh, the 76ers are a little bit better by three. They're shooting the ball about two percentage points better by three. Defensively, look, it's about even on defensively, too. The effective field goal percentage is only two percentage points different. Three-point field goal percentage is only one percentage point difference. The 76ers, though, are a little bit more efficient in terms of how they are on defense. Their, their defensive efficiency is better, and, and subsequently, they're holding their opponents about five less points per game. And then their net rating is better. Their net rating for the 76ers is a positive 11.4. For the Bucks, it's a positive 8.4. No real rebounding edge at all for either one of these teams. For this one, I actually thought it was pretty tough. I mean, we know the 76ers are really tough at home. They've been able to, you know, make up for Joel Embiid missing uh, the last couple of games there. At least they're playing real. They're still, you know, competitive in games without their star missing. I'm going to really rely on net rating for this one in terms of what's going to be the difference because everything is really even. But the net rating for the 76ers are different or are, are are better. So I'm going to go ahead and say the 76ers win this game, but it'll be just by one to two points. This one will be razor close. This one, this one will be a fantastic ball game. All right, for the next one, let's go ahead and talk about the Warriors and the Rockets. There's only one stat you need to know for this game. One, the Rockets have lost 17 straight games. 17 straight games. I didn't even look up any stats for these teams. There's no point. If you lose 17 straight games in a row, you're not doing anything better than your opponent. You're getting your ass kicked in every stat. <laughs> There's no point looking up with the right. They've lost 17 straight games. If you look at, you know, look at that 17 stretch, there's tons of blowouts filtered in there. I was kind of watching the game last night uh, there against the Hawks. They actually had a chance in the fourth quarter. It was, it was relatively close, at least earlier on in the fourth quarter. Thought maybe the Rockets would snap their skid, but no, they fell apart in the fourth quarter, and the Hawks were able to, you know, to pull away there, you know, towards the end of that game. So, yeah, this one is Warriors all day long. It just comes down to, you know, how much are they going to win by? I did take a peek at the line just before I got in here to try and help me out on make my decision because. It just the Rockets are just such a bad team. They're so they're, they're, there's just so much unknown. I mean, even tonight they're resting, uh, or John Paul, or uh, yeah, or John Wall, not John Paul. John Wall is still out with injury, and they're resting Victor Oladipo. So yeah, I mean, it's just a shitty team. I'm gonna go ahead and say the Warriors win the game by 13 to 15. The line is right now Warriors minus 11. This Rockets team is is so bad. I think they'll be deflated after maybe having a chance to win the game last night in the fourth quarter. You know they've now 17 straight losses. They're gonna they're gonna lose. So let's just hope they get their ass kicked pretty good by 13 to 15 points. Okay, for the next one, let's talk about the Hornets and the Nuggets. I think this will be a really good, fantastic game. Effective field goal percentage is dead on for these teams. One's 56.7, the other one's 56.5. Three-point field goal percentage, one's 40.3, the other one's 41.3. You know, points per game, Hornets are getting three more points per game. But, yeah, that one's about even as you can get, you know, from an offensive standpoint. Defensively, though, the Nuggets will get the edge here. Uh, effective field goal percentage about five percentage points better for the Nuggets here, and three point field goal percentage is four percentage points better from the Nuggets. So I and, and subsequently they're holding their opponents to eight less points per game. Net rating also favors the Nuggets. They're a positive seven point three, where the Hornets are a positive one point seven. No real advantage there on the boards. It's about even there for rebounding percentage. But uh, you can see that the Nuggets will have the advantage on the defensive, while the offense is about canceled out. I like the Nuggets to win this game. And I like the Nuggets to win this game by five to six points. Then the last game we got here is this. We've got the Clippers and the Mavericks. This is another game where it's going to be relatively easy or even there for the most part. Offensively, field goal percentage is 56.4 to 55.4. The 
Clippers will hold the advantage, though, from beyond the arc. They do shoot the ball better. They shoot at 41.3% versus the Mavericks, 36.6%. And then subsequently, the, the Clippers are getting about four more points per game. Or no, about uh, six more points. Sorry, six more points per game. Defensively, though, this is where the Mavericks can make up for it. They're holding their opponents to less field, effective field goal percentage, about f- four percentage points, and they're better uh, defending the three by about two percentage points better. So, yeah, and then they're allowing eight less points per game. So the Mavericks can make up the difference from a little bit of what maybe the Clippers can have an advantage from beyond the arc. The, the Mavericks can make this up. Uh, on their defensive and then net rating for this one net rating will probably surprise you guys because Clippers have that name recognition and also with the player recognition the Clippers net rating is only at 0.2 positive 0.2 where the Mavs come in at positive 4.6 so yeah the Mavs definitely have the advantage they're more efficient on both the offensive and the defensive side for this one here though these two teams just played the other night Clippers went ahead and won the game by 10 points but if you look at the box score, it was it was even. Both teams shot 50%. I mean, it was it was kind of even uh, throughout most of the box scores when you went ahead and looked it up. I think the Mavs are going to go ahead and pull out the window in this one. I like the Mavs to win the game by three to four points. I don't I don't see this being a 10 point win. I think that was you know a little bit of anomaly there just based on the stats. So this one will be a little bit closer of a game, but I think the Mavs can pull this out and go ahead and get the victory there on the home court this time as opposed to the other night. Okay, that's how we're going to do it, folks. That's how we'll fill out our chances to win $25,000 on tonight's NBA action. Again, follow me on Twitter. You never know in this crazy COVID age, you know, guys, you're yo-yoing up and down a lineup. We may make a change like last week. So, yeah, just follow me on Twitter if any we get any late injury news of guys being in or out of the lineup could alter our decisions. But otherwise, this is what we'll go with. This is how we'll win that $25,000. Go ahead and hit that like button if I've been of help to you. And as always, I always, always want to wish you good luck on your picks. Go get that money. Thanks for watching this episode of Winning Bets. I'm Jason Mattis. I'll see you again when we're celebrating the wins and making more winning bets. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more winning bets.